Anyway, welcome to the National Library on this very wet weekend. And I'm really thankful that you believe in this, in AI and education, that you bother coming down. Lah. And uh, this isn't uh, just one talk, okay? It's just the beginning of something special. So, I'll just share with you um, what is Catalyst. As you know, Catalyst kind of starts for with a little something, you drop in a little something, right? And something grows. So this is NLB's attempt to see whether we can give you a new kind of programming and work very closely with partners. So thank you, SUTD, and thank you to AI for Good Asia uh, to work closely and see whether we can develop something that is meaningful for Singapore, where you can actually take part in all these emerging issues, whether it's AI or some other issue, uh, see and help actually shape the kind of Singapore we want. Lah. Um, we're talking about trust. I thought, you know, I kick off by talking about trust in the area of teaching. So, I think David mentioned November 2022. That's when ChatGPT Chat came on the scene. Um, I've been playing around with GPT-2, the precursor to ChatGPT, a few months before, but you know, it was a little bit harder to use. You have to click on certain things. But when ChatGPT came on the scene, you just talk to it, and then it will do whatever you need it to do. That blew my mind, and it blew a lot of people's mind, and it also set off a lot of panic alarms. So we spent December, you know, being asked, hey, with this new AI tool, how do we know whether our, own, our students write their own reports, submit their own work? How do we know that it's not AI who's doing it for them? So, you know, that, that was what's happening in December. And I teach communications. Okay, we, when GPT came on the scene, I was thinking to myself, Habis, I am out of a job. You know, you just tell GPT what you want and out comes the report in a few seconds. Very fast. So I was thinking, okay, you know, I think we are all a little bit frazzled by the emergence of GPT. But maybe, let me, you know, don't panic. Let me start thinking from the perspective of me as a teacher. So instead of seeing GPT, I, I play with uh, GPT, so I know what it's capable of. So, so instead of looking at GPT as, you know, as something to be fearful of, how can I make it an ally for my teaching purposes? I teach students how to write. When students hear about writing, you can tell it's not their favorite topic. So my students come from all over the poly, you know, they are very different. You have some people who like to write, you have some people who don't like to write. You have some international students. So when it comes to writing, very often, they are, for a lot of the students, how do I start? You know, how do I get rid of that blank page? And they'll sit there for a long time. So I was thinking to myself, you know, we have an AI new AI tool. How can I make use of this tool to help my students learn more meaningfully? So, I spend time during the weekends uh, spending a lot of time with ChatGPT. I think I spend more time with ChatGPT than my family. <laughs> Sat down to think about how do I integrate, how do I make use of AI as a way to help them do some things uh, GPT and I came up with the fact that, A, I can help them brainstorm for ideas. Uh, GPT is also very good at helping to organize thoughts. GPT can also correct grammatical mistakes, and so on and so forth. So, what I did in my writing class was, this was the big, very, very early on. So, the students, you know, were still all very blur blur about GPT. So, you know, I needed to help them understand what is GPT. 
I needed to help them understand what are the affordances, what are the limitations. Okay, you want to use something, you make sure you know the good and the bad. Okay, so as they started using, you know, students were saying, wow, now very good, I can ask, you know, GPT, how do I start? What's the first sentence? Help me to come up with a structure. So for some of the students, you know, they will say, sure, this is very, very helpful. I used to be very, very nervous about writing, but it's very helpful for me. But as students start, started using this, it's also very interesting because students started seeing AI's limitation. They would say, hey, Cher, wow, this AI uh, gave me a reference. Then when I went to Google, uh, it doesn't exist. <laughs> or, or it would say, wow, the whatever it wrote, uh, so boring, so generic. My friend and I put in the same prompt. Then we got almost the same thing. Leh. So, you know, I think there was a lot of discussion. They were quite, you know, they were thinking through about how they could make use of this tool. But of course, you know, as I think all of you are teachers, we want people to do something. We also need to give very clear instructions. The clearer, the better. So if I'm going to get them to use GPT, I must also tell them, hey, what are some of the things you cannot do? So they cannot... Use, they can only use GPT to brainstorm. They cannot use GPT to write the entire, uh, their, their report for them. So every piece of AI information must be verified. Every time you go and look for something, you need to verify it. You need to, you know, from that GPT gave you, is it real? Does it exist? Because we know that GPT hallucinates. And they need to keep their chat logs. So that, you know, we can come back to them and say, hey, what, what, quest what was the prompt you put in? How did you decide what to use? Uh, we want the students to also use something called versioning. So in Word document, you can copy version 1, co version 2, version 3. You know, we want to make sure that we can see their progress as they learn. Not that, you know, or... Be or so that, you know, it's not the night before, suddenly you put in a prompt and then GPT comes up with the actual answer for you. So it's interesting because, you know, as students started writing, you know, it, the, the process of having to compare and contrast, there's a lot of cognitive work involved. They have to think through. It's not like I just take and use. So to me, it's working through AI, you know, regarding how to think. And one of my students said, Wow, sure, I tell you, uh, AI, uh, there's a lot of work involved. No, I have to double check so many things. I might as well just Google for the answer. Then at least I know the Google, where the source comes from. Quite true, you know? The student is obviously thinking about what is the student's own role, where, where the human can come in. I, I think when it comes to you know, education, when you talk about trust, this is how I see trust. When you trust that your students, they are able to use AI ethically. And similarly, when your students trust that you, the teacher, you, you are there to help them learn. I think that is where, what trust is all about. Of course, you have, you know, two extremes of trust. There are people where, you know, everything is, cannot use AI. But I think that, you know, if you don't use AI, and AI is all around us, you are missing the opportunity to teach your students. But at the same time, you also have the other extreme. AI knows everything. So I just take everything as the gospel truth. Okay, they don't check. I think what we are looking for is the sweet spot uh, where, you know, it's somewhere in the middle. You know the affordances of AI, you understand the limitations of AI, you know when to use it, you know when the human should come in. At the same time, you know, you also, it's also transparent. When you're using it, it's transparent. You don't hide from your teacher that you're using AI. Um, there's also very clear guidelines that's given when to use, when not to use. 
I think, you know, with informed trust, we are moving from, is this their work to, how can I combine insights from both the AI and myself? I think this is very important. Uh, they start thinking about, eh, how do I use AI ethically? When does the human come in? And to end off, you know, because I'm talking about AI, uh, I thought I'll get GPT to also help me come up with a framework that defines all that I've talked about regarding what trust is all about. It's about competency, it's about knowing when to use AI, when not to use AI, it's about recognizing what only the human can provide. Um, it's about, for teachers, it's about creating that safety and transparency where people use AI. Um, Happy to continue the conversation. Um, I'll leave my uh, information here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lei Ping. So, so Lei Ping really raised a very important question, right? So uh, despite the generative AI surprises us, they give a lot of a very useful uh, uh, output to us when we are asking them for, for some of the outputs. Uh, there are times AI, generative AI still cannot generate you know, uh, sensible answers to a human being. And therefore, where is the, the sweet spot between the trust of AI? And that is a very important point as we are talking about the future human-AI collaboration, right? And where is the sweet spot? What kind of competencies do uh, our human should have in order to be able to work productively with AI, 